Hi everyone, welcome back to Jordan Samuel Skin Talks. I have somebody who is a huge mentor and educator for me personally, but for the skincare world at large, whether you are a esthetician or a consumer, um, talk about somebody who knows their skin inside and out, up and down, left and right, uh, Miss Narita Joy. Hello. <laughs> I am so excited to have you here. Um, I am just going to ask you all the questions and have you educate and give all the answers because mm -hmm. this is like prime property here. I hate to say that and that's actually awful to say. But um, <laughs> in terms of what is in Narita's brain and the, I just said to her earlier that I have learned more from her than I did in my time in aesthetic school. Uh, she's brilliant. So with you. you brilliant and have helped me and my skin and my client's skin. I will send some clients who are down in LA to see Narita. Mm -hmm. um, I also will call or text Narita and ask her for help with clients. Um, brilliant. <laughs> with that being said, question number one. Um, okay, so I think this is a great question for, because I think a lot of people have this, mm -hmm. but uh, could uh, Narita try and explain what surface dryness is? Um, because you talk about that a lot, but I think a lot of people want to know sort of if they have it themselves or, or, or if there's any key things that they can look for um, to sort of denote that they have that. Well, I, I do. I, I mean, I know I certainly go over it a lot with um, in my videos uh, as, you know, when you wash your face and your, your face feels that tight, squeaky clean afterwards, it gives people the illusion that their skin is clean, but really um, it, it's just drying the outer layer. Because I always say you can't dry up oil, you know, because oil comes from inside. So it's that tight, squeaky clean feeling, but then when you look under a Maggie lamp or you just look in the mirror, and if you can see fine little lines on your skin, or even, you know, if you just, they're little lines, they're not really wrinkles, but what we call premature lines that are just there from not using the right products. So dryness is when you can see those little lines that are not really wrinkles. And just the, the tightness and the dryness that it creates is such a problem because it doesn't allow oil to come out and then it doesn't allow treatment products to get in either. So it's the biggest problem I see, especially with people with oily skin is it creates so much congestion underneath the skin, it makes your pore size larger because the bacteria, dead cells and sebum that builds up within a pore, it can't get out. So of course it, it has to, it stretches your pore size. So I think that ultimately it's just the biggest problem, especially with oily skins, is surface dryness. If you alleviate that, you're gonna get a smaller pore, a more balanced oily skin and uh, and the skin just it looks more youthful mm -hmm. when it's not surface dry. I agree, so, but it is. It's like the number one. It's the number one, and nine out of ten times when someone comes in, especially living for me living here in California, in Los Angeles, it's so dry. So nine out of ten times with a client, they're surface dry, yeah. and it doesn't matter whether they're dry, oily, or anywhere in between. It's it's a huge problem. Yeah, and once you can alleviate that, you can change your skin very quickly. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. I know it's it is like the number one um, concern and issue I see with a lot of my clients. This one is interesting, which I, I just think it's great to deal with, but it's um, when brands advertise as specifically formulated for men's skin, is it just marketing? Uh... You know, I, I mean, most men's lines that I've seen, they're not as complex. They're pretty simple. So I find that most men tend to not want to be as fussy about doing their face. They want it to be pretty simple. So I think that from, a, a, from that point of view, that yes, the marketing is smart because, you know, God forbid you have 10 different serums well, and, right. <laughs> you know, whereas, you know, most guys just want to, they want to cleanse their skin, put a moisturizer on, maybe sunblock and an eye product. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, so I, I would say that it's marketed more for the simplicity of it for a guy. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. I just love that because I, I felt this, it's like, yes, we all have different skin concerns and skin issues. So yes. it's, but that perfect example is that it's marketed right for the simplicity yes, of it. Yes, absolutely. Um, what are your thoughts on derma rolling? Um, 
and uh, demirolling being because there are different types of well yeah I mean I think I think in this instance the dermarolling is more of the at home the shorter Needle. needles you know yeah. not something that is done in a medical yeah. setting um, uh, you know I, I'm I'm going to say that I find it to all be a little gimmicky to be honest with you in the 40 years that I've been in skincare and this in May this year it is 40 years and over a hundred thousand facials now really you, you know what what it is is I say it because I still work with my hands you know that's right. really important right. to me I'm not writing a prescription and not touching people I'm touching people so I've used a lot of different machines over the years and I really liked when I, I liked a conversation in a magazine recently when one doctor said um, you know the 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 microneedling is so fabulous, you know, it causes trauma to the skin and it, it stimulates collagen. And then another doctor after him just says, but why, why would you cause trauma to a skin um, through piercing it and, and causing scar tissue when you can just use a treatment product, something that has a retinol or an alpha hydroxy acid in it that will get to your fibroblast cells and do exactly the same without creating scar tissue. Like, why wouldn't you go that route? And, and I am of that believer. I am of that believer of why would you cause trauma to the skin to risk the chance of there being scar tissue later? Because, you know, I've had liposuction done and I've had things done many years ago to know the problems that, it, that happens when you've got scar tissue and you've got to break that up and the, the deepest massage you can do and whatever it is you can do, it's still there. You know, there is a price you pay for everything. Yes. I work with a facial plastic surgeon. I see a lot. And I will say people do not realize that long term, the problems that when you start piercing the skin, I mean, does it stimulate coll collagen and all oh, makes my skin feel firm and of course it makes it feel firm because there's trauma being caused to the skin but that doesn't last but what what happens later is are, are you if you think about a scar when you cut yourself and that the scar the skin on that scar is not dewy and pretty it's flat so what happens you're going to create a different texture your skin is going to be flat and like I work with people that have peels and strong peels to their skin all the time and they always say to me, Nerida, what is the moisturizer that you use that makes your skin so dewy and pretty? And I say, it's not my moisturizer I use, it's my skin because I don't do laser. I don't pierce my skin to have to stimulate. But what I do use is I use good home care mm -hmm. and I, home care is very important. You have to use your home care. So. My, my thing is that it's gimmicky, okay? But what I will say is, and I know a lot of people will go against this, but what I will say is if you have scarring and you have pitting, then you can, you can use it and it can be a positive. Okay. Okay, so it, there is a, a, a portion of our business where it's helpful, but, I will, but for the majority of people that are just doing it for other reasons, it's it's not it's not going to give you that long term but um, they're looking for something always something new you know I agree so. and you brought up a great point too that goes into another thing but same thing with not to get too far into this but lasers and it was you know a lot of these treatments were created for a burn victim mm -hmm. some you know like mm -hmm. serious serious That's issues right. and then they found like oh it does you know create this little bit of yes, you know, sir, collagen absolutely. stimulation right. and now we've gone overboard the other way because this is not why it was created in the first place yes and uh, so to your point of uh, people with very specific things can yes. use it and what's going to happen is you see it, it's the business and because I've been in the business a long time it has in the last 10 years really so much is going on there's so much new stuff coming out constantly whereas it wasn't like that 20 years ago you know, it was like, oh my gosh, AHAs. Thank you, Dr. Howard Murad, for, right. you know, it, it, it's, but now it's moving so fast that we're not seeing what's going to happen in 10 years, but you wait in 10 and 20 years, and because we're living longer now, you can't make your skin thicker. You know, you can lift and tuck all you like, but you can't make your skin thicker. So, 
are they, how are these people going to look in 10 or 20 years? You know, and it makes me nervous, to be honest. It makes me really nervous because I can't stress enough to people that your home care regimen is everything. You know, coming and seeing me is just the little icing on the cake. But you, you want, you, you, that home care is, is vital and making sure that you're using things that really, that stimulate and get to the areas in your skin where it needs to get to, to make a difference. Because everyone wants their skin to look great. But, you know, but you've got to, you've got to build a foundation, a strong foundation to support your skin for your future. I mean, I feel like I don't need to say anything else. Just listen to that. Yeah. It's, but it's true. It's brilliant. I told you. <laughs> Uh, this customer asks, I've never gotten a glow or seen the benefits of an acid toner. Do I need to try a stronger strength? Um, and also side note, because I know this is of important uh, notes for skin type, uh, this person is African American. So that's asking a question about acids. Okay. Um, so yes, do they've never seen a glow or seen benefits from an acid or an acid toner. Okay, well I will say that I've, um, I know a lot about acids. I've worked a lot with acids. And I really like acids. I, I particularly love lactic acid because it tends to be better for sensitive skin. But I am a believer of all acids because they all have a different molecular size and a weight, which means that they work on different levels in the skin. So ultimately, if you can work with a treatment product that has all your acids in it, you're going to have a, a really a stronger, a better looking skin, okay, because it's going to work on the different levels. Now with African American skin, it's sometimes acids just, they're not great. You know, retinols tend to work better. And when I talk about retinols, I never, ever recommend prescription strength. And I, I'm not to say it's not good, but I am again thinking long term for the skin and thinking of a lot of different things. And, and most importantly, it's just not necessary to go prescription strength with retinols. So I like to use a retinol every night and I do myself, but it is far from a prescription one. So for an African American skin, vitamin A is amazing. It, um, that an African American skin over any skin can take vitamin A better than Asian, Caucasian, any other skin. Um, so I will say that um, acids don't work for everybody, they just don't. And it, it depends on, you know, the acids that I work with, it depends on the delivery system that that acid is in. Because, you know, when I have somebody come in and say to me, you know, I can't use glycolic, I'm allergic to it, in my head, you know, which I've said to you earlier, I roll my eyes and go, oh no, here we go. Right. Because there are so many different products. And it, it all depends on the chemistry. You know, you being a developer, you know and you understand the importance of ingredients and how we coat those ingredients. You know, and chemistry is such an amazing thing that you can change the composition of something that's comedogenic, clogging pores, to non-comedogenic. You know, just the, so it's, it's an amazing thing, but acids are very, you know, in some forms they're very acidic and they're a problem. And in other forms, depending on the delivery system, then they're perfect. Mm -hmm. So without, you know, seeing that person and, and being really specific because we can't see everybody, right. I would say that I would tend for her to go more the vitamin A route and stay away from acids because, as I said, it, it depends on the brand and maybe she could try something that's a lactic acid, that's coated, that maybe has an oil base because when you work with acids, it's good to have a delivery system that leaves something on the skin that has that oily film almost. Okay. Uh, so she could try that, but, um, but generally vitamin A, you know, retinols are the way to go, non-prescription retinols. Great. tend to be better for an African-American skin, is my experience. Great information. Yeah. Love it. How do you try to spread awareness to a client about the importance uh, of SPF and cleansing correctly? Uh, mm. This uh, Then, well, we'll just start with, we'll just start there. Okay. Well, um, cleansing to me is 50% of your regimen. If you, number one, are not cleansing your skin, big problem. Like, almost I would say to you, don't waste my time. Please okay. leave and go see somebody else. Because, 
if you are not cleansing your skin correctly, anything that I tell you thereafter is not going to be right. You know, it's not going to work for you. And so you have to cleanse your skin. And if you only have time to cleanse your skin once a day, then you have to do it at night time. And you must cleanse your, your skin twice at night. And your first cleanse, you have to take it off with a warm, wet washcloth because that's just what you've got to do. I am not a believer of foaming cleansers, as, uh, as I mentioned. Um, unless you live in a climate where it's really humid and you have no surface dryness and you are just a true oily skin, then I will say, you know what, good for you, you can use a foaming cleanser. But everybody else, it's not, it's not okay for them. Uh, it is 50% of your regimen because it sets up your slate for everything else you're going to do. It prepares your skin for everything else. If you are not cleansing correctly, it's, it's don't waste your time spending your money. Right. That's, that's how I feel. Right. So that's number one. Number two, sunscreen is, uh, sunscreens are very important, but you have to be careful with sunscreens because sunscreens can burn your skin. This, the chemicals in sunscreens are not so great. And I'm a huge believer in wearing a high sunscreen. I wear one every day myself that's a 60. Um, I feel that you, I like titanium and I like zinc. Mm -hmm. I like mineral sunscreens. I like mineral makeup, period, because you can sweat with it on. And, and I have steam going all day doing facials. Yeah. So I don't mind that it's steam that's getting on into my face too, because I'm able to use you know, minerals, sunscreen, mineral makeup. But I feel that, um, but sunscreens are very tricky. And I also feel that they're a very personal thing because you know, some like them a very thin texture and to feel like they don't have much on their skin. And others like, you know, I like to feel mine on my skin. Yeah. yeah. So I like something that, that I can feel I have a protective layer on my skin. But, um, but I, I, I very much believe in sunscreens. I just don't believe in the majority of the commercial ones that are on the market. They can create problems. They can burn the skin. They can cause ruddiness. They can cause irritation and lots of bumps are left as a result of that. that this kind of thing doesn't go away easy. So I, I think that your type of sunscreens are very important. But I'm a huge believer in, in mineral sunscreens. Yeah. Uh, side note on this, because this was the exact, I don't know if you remember a few months ago, I called you in a panic, like, my skin, I had a patch up here that was just yeah. red and bumpy and I had no idea what it was from, and it was a sunscreen that I was using, and I was in an extremely, extremely hot climate at the time. I was in Palm Desert, it was 120 degrees, um, and so I was slathered, yeah. I, I mean, slathered constantly, like, almost every hour reapplying, because I was just, I was sweating, I was in the pool, and it was... I, we were outside uh, and about two weeks after that I developed this rashy red bumpy and I was trying everything I was expul I was doing everything correctly that I thought but mm -hmm. I had sort of had a react a bad reaction to uh, uh, like a contact dermatitis and a burn almost yes, to yes. That's a what specific happens. sunscreen mm -hmm. and it was a mix of there was a touch of zinc in there but it was primarily chemical sunscreen mm -hmm. and uh, I know that they do work for some people, but in my instance, yeah, I had that and had to go on hydrocortisone and that's Yeah, they, they to seem to work for less and less people, you know, the, yeah, the chemical ones, yeah. because people nowadays are just are more sensitive than usual, yeah. you know, and, and plus when the eclipse happened not that long ago, it changed the sun. The sun's rays is different now because I can feel it, you know, it, it something changed. I mean, it's, it's a different sun we're dealing with now. It's interesting. So, it also changed a lot of things. I swear to God, like communication yeah, for me went out. <laughs> it's a whole nother story. Um, okay, this this customer or mm -hmm. fan had a uh, follow up question, which I love because I feel like it's not dealt with a lot. Um, what are your top products or tips? So we'll talk about tips. What are your top tips for body care? Mm -hmm. Um, I uh, wow, well. I guess for body, I think that when your skin, you get out of the shower and the skin is slightly damp, we all know that's the best time to put your lotion on. You know, I, I think that it depends. I'm not someone who has to use a lot of body lotion because I'm not someone who goes in the sun a lot. If you are an outdoorsy person, you are going to have to use sunscreen more. I, sorry, not sunscreen, body care oh, yeah. more, uh, body lotions more. 
I like body lotions, again, to have a little bit of retinol in them. You know, I'm if I'm going to be putting something on my skin, I, I like to know that it's getting Just somewhere yeah. and it's doing something. But I think, um, you know, if, I mean, dry brushing and it, again I think it's such a personal thing it be, it just depends on you know if you have a lot of cellulite I think it's nice to do some extra dry brushing and things in in those areas but I think you know it, it's a personal thing I just I like any of my products I like them to have something active in them a little bit I don't like too smelly kinds of yeah. lotions and potions I, it's just not something that I like and uh, personally but uh, you know there's so many great ones out there I don't you know I don't know um, no I agree yeah but I, that's what I always say too it's like sort of and it's an extension of your face yes. so you're not going to use like highly foaming cleansers are going to dry your skin yes you know it's just even if it feels nice and like yes it's oh yes no I don't like, I absolutely I don't I mean you can't use soap all over your body you use it in the essential areas right you just can't do that sort of thing. And uh, oils, uh, you know, I'm, I know there's a big oil fad going on right now, and people love all these oils. But it was, it was interesting that I just the other day I had a client that came in and said, you know, I, I know there's a lot of talk about coconut oil, and I wanted to try it, and I found it in a makeup, and I bought the makeup, and now look, you know, now look at all the pimples that I have. But I just sort of think that. Um, you know, oils, it has a large molecule. Mm -hmm. It's a tricky thing. So on the body, you could probably get away with more than on the face and using different body oils. But on the face, you have to be careful, you know, with, with oils, I think. I always tell people like to think of if they're drier skin type oils as a supplement. Like where yes, you yes, have a good moisturizer and you put two drops into yes, your moisturizer. Yes, like just to like add a little bit of oomph to it. Yes, absolutely. Um, if you're feeling dry or you were traveling on a plane or Yes. X, Y, and Z, but that's... Yes, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Hi, everyone. Thanks for watching. You can subscribe by clicking the black JS circle down below so we can stay in contact and keep talking. To watch more videos, you can click on the link here or possibly here. Thanks for watching. Bye.